So good morning guys and today I wanted to focus on states and with states I'm not talking about the USA or any other country that has states, I'm talking about in-game states. So let's say you put the lights on, the game will pass you the state of the light saying the light is on or the light is off. I'm not completely honest because it tells you I turned it on and I turned it off and that is just to save headroom because it would it make sense to keep calling the variable because we know that if it's on it's on if somebody switched it off it's off so why would we keep pinging the game is it on or off right so only when something changes we get the data so in order to handle the data well let's put the throttle down first let's see we have a new tabs we have we have not new tabs, we have tabs now because the data is was growing. So, oh, if you want to take a look at the lights that we've added, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14 lights added. So 14 new variables, plus 2 for the overspeed warning and the stall warning. I've set some up on my Arduino, um, as you might see, and the lights, obviously. Now. It depends a bit on the plane you're flying because in the A320 it was quite accurately when we closed certain lights the lights would go off and the state would be correct in this one it isn't always 100% correct because if we take a look at the this is the head panel okay that works so that one is working let's see okay, the taxi light I haven't bound to anything I believe nav lights i did bound the nav lights but it's just not did i bound the nav lights or am i just lying Get light nav on nav before okay. oh i see i have just some faults in my codes I'm not going to fix that right now i'm going to show you later on how you can implement it yourself in your code so we're going to go over that on a later time see strobe is working so probably it's just me that messes up the codes and i'm blaming the game but to be honest sometimes the game especially with the lights can differ between which plane you're flying and how it will work in reality okay, let's see that's a, weird, that's a weird word um this light was somewhere over here you better still lightning no no this one this light can somebody tell me which light doesn't matter if i turn it off one of these lights will turn off as well you're just gonna have to trust me on that oh perhaps if i just it's the quick key for turning off the engine again. Control E. But the lights will stay on. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fly because I've got something way much cooler to show you. I need to keep this hand down, man. Like what? Okay, so if you learn something from this, I want to learn something from you because watch. I always have the problem that, look, that's swerving. Why? Why is it swerving like that? I'm using Xbox controller, but it shouldn't be this bad, right? Oh. Here we go. And now. Like I said, we have the lights, those worked. It'll flow in the code, but that can be worked out. But we have something, oh, yeah, watch this. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I love it.
you can create your own warnings to annoy everyone in the house when you fuck up. That's that's the beauty of it. It's just that sound already was annoying and now you can have a beeping light with a beep to go with it. Um, so that, uh, that is what I'm going to show you in this video. I hope you enjoy. If you like it, leave a like. And if you want to keep updated, subscribe. And let's just dive right into it. Okay, so I'm going to put the code in the comments as well. The first thing we need is the latest version of the connector. It's going to be 0.5.1. You can either download it, download it from the comments down below. Or if I do everything properly, this should change to an update is available. If you click on it, you go to the downloads page immediately and you can download the latest version. Well, as, as I already mentioned, we now have the lights and the warnings added. The other tabs are added as well, but the data was already in there, so you could already use it. The only new thing is the warnings and the lights. Well, if we would select all, for instance, and we would start, we would receive a Boolean, if we call it from a library. Now, a Boolean is a true or false state. So if you're going to request get lights taxi on, it's going to say true or false. Are they on or are they off? Pretty straightforward. Now on my test bench, oh my little beauty, I have <laughs> mounted eight LEDs, which I've used as a status test to see if they would work, right? What, what we could do, hook up the LEDs to our Arduino, define them as outputs. You have to see for yourself where you've hooked up your LED. In my instance, I did 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So that's eight LEDs total. All defined as outputs and I've hooked up a buzzer. Let me see if I can quickly turn this beauty around. Don't mind the cable mess. It's, oh, uh, let's add. It isn't that bad, right? So, you might be able to see that we have our little buzzer right here. We have our eight LEDs going in. And the LEDs are also wired up to a resistor. So don't be afraid that they're gonna burn. They are not. I've used a 220R resistor, but the lights, in my opinion, are still quite bright, so I would perhaps go with 470, 300R, anything you could find between 220, 470, and just check for yourself what the best brightness is for your taste. In my case, it works, it's fine, uh, isn't too bright, but it could be dimmer if you get my drift. So if we go to our connector, we defined, okay, we have our connector, in the loop, we set connector.data handling, so it keeps receiving the data and again processes it depending on the prefix that our connector passes to the library. So just for instance, the get stall warning is, I believe, 333. So our stall warning consists of incoming message of 333 and either a zero or a one. Zero is off, one is on. <coughs> Now, if we get a star warning, we get true or false, right? So if the star warning is true, do something. Well, the easiest to show is actually the lights, because we just check if get light strobe is on, turn the signal high, so send a signal to the LED to turn on. If you see the exclamation mark in front, so if it's not on, so if it's false, digital right, low. So that's a way we can easily just manipulate the LED based on the state of the boolean. So if in game we turn the lights off, our library is going to store the data that says false. So if connector.getLightStrobe on, it's going to return false, digital write, let A2 or any LED you hooked up, low. The moment we strip <laughs> Swip the, uh, swip the switch, no, flip the switch in game, 
a library is going to contain the value true. So that's the basic logic behind it. So that's all we need to actually just start manipulating our LEDs on a panel. If it's true, turn it on. If it's false, turn it off. Couldn't be simpler, I think. Same goes for all the other lights. I got all eight hooked up right now. There's one thing that we haven't used before, and that is millis, millis, milliseconds. Now, what's the beauty about milliseconds? Before, we always did add a delay. So if we said light on, delay 1000, light off, delay 1000, that would turn the light on, light off, light on, light off, if you put it in a loop, right? There is a downside to that approach, and it is a delay actually freezes up our complete Arduino program. So in order to circumvent that, we're just going to count the milliseconds ourselves and do the calculations based on those milliseconds to avoid that the Arduino has to stop all processes with a delay. We're just going to check, okay, if the time between the previous check and now is past x certain milliseconds, perform an action. If not, don't perform the action. So in the case of the stall warning, we could see that the light would go on, off. So if the milliseconds point was reached, it would go on or else it would go off. Same goes for the beep. Now, how can we achieve that? We need three values. An unsigned long start milliseconds, unsigned long current milliseconds, a constant unsigned long of a period. Now the period is going to be as long as you'd like. If you want it to be one second, you're going to make this 1000. I wanted it to have half a second, so I change it to 500. If you want to have three seconds, 3000, it's all up to you what you like. So this means that every 3000 seconds, a new loop gets initiated or a new phase gets reached, right? Now, what we did in the get stall warning, so if the stall warning is on, and if the current milliseconds minus the start milliseconds, which we defined in the setup, so in the setup we said start milliseconds is millis, millis, it's going to return the current millis from the start of the program. So if the current milliseconds minus the start milliseconds is bigger or equal to our defined period. So we said 500. So here we check current millis is milliseconds from the start of the program. So if this minus the start of the program is 500 or more, we're going to do digital write let and we're going to turn a buzzer. It's important to also define the start milliseconds as the current milliseconds. That means that if the statement was true, we make sure that we overwrite the start milliseconds with the current milliseconds so a new loop can get initiated or else it will always be bigger or higher than the start milliseconds because we never change the start. <clears throat> we never change the start value. So it will always be true and you will always have to light on and always have to beep there. And that's gonna be that's gonna annoy you quite fast, let me tell you. Has that happened quite a lot. Um and it, if it's no longer the case, so else we're gonna digital write low and remove the tone. So that's actually a pretty basic implementation of your own timer to change the state of a light and a buzzer without having to rely on a delay that's going to block up the rest of your code. And with that, in, with that said, you already have a lot more power in your controller. Because in, let me see if I can, yeah, here it is. Whoa. Ta -da. Let me put you on the side so we can... What we used to do, or what I used to do, 
And this was, this is my first project, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, this is my, my very first Arduino even. What I did is if it's on, let me see if I, let me just plug it in. Here we go. Yeah. You're able to see that if I flip the switch, it's on. If I flip it off, it's off, right? But this has nothing to do with the in-game state. So if I would start a plane with the lights were on, but my toggles were off, well, I made it in a way that the in-game state always corresponds to the switch. So if it's off, it will send a signal that you need to turn the lights off, so the light would also be off. But in my case, I could also just, these are just hardwired to the switch itself. So the power goes from the switch, if it's on through the LED to ground to the board. So there is no, the, I can't control the LEDs without the switches. But what we could do right now is create a button instead of a switch or something else. Let's say just a button for the autopilot. Turn on autopilot, turn off autopilot. If it's on, turn the LED on. If it's off, turn the LED off. That wasn't possible with this approach because it only could work with a toggle or else the in-game state wouldn't necessarily match. Then we would have to turn the game on pause, press the light until the light is on or off, etc. So that's just too much of a hassle. Now we can just say, okay, I want these lights to be passed to me. Pass it to the library. The library says, okay, it's true or false, on or off. So I hope this is something you wanted, liked, needed. I'm going to be working on some extra values. And tomorrow I'm going to be back with a way to use your Arduino in the office if you want to have that, to have it be a more predictive unit as well, instead of just for the games. It's a good excuse to tell your boss or your wife or your husband, whatever. So that's coming up. If you want to keep updated, subscribe. If you liked it, leave a like, and I hope to see you in the next one.